Let's now move on to the fourth email today. What's next? I was thinking that we need to get this man a chalkboard. I mean, that was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he needs a dry erase board behind him. <laughs> um, next up is Mike Tremble Tremblay, Mandalorian. I watched the Star Wars Celebration candle for the Mandalorian online and even saw the footage and behind the scenes stuff they showed. It looks amazing. Could this show be the ultimate game changer for Disney Plus and make everyone flock to the new service? I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, on, on one of my open mics yesterday, uh, I went down through, because everybody's just kind of discounting Netflix at this point. And I went through a list of a, like 20 big, popular, wonderful, original shows on Netflix uh, that are still going to be there when Disney Plus launches. And, and my whole thing is like, guys, make no mistake, even when Disney Plus launches, Netflix is still the big boy on the block when it comes to this, to this ecosphere. And they have an impressive lineup of series. <laughs> Not so impressive with their original movies, but their original series, impressive. Okay, so that being said, there was nothing they could have done better than launching Disney Plus with The Mandalorian. There, there, there is no better move they could have possibly made than to come out of the gates and say, on the day this thing launches, we're going to have all these Star Wars movies. We're going to have all these Marvel movies. We're going to have 30 seasons of The Simpsons. We're going to have all these Pixar films. The Disney Vault is going to be opened up now permanently. All the 500 classic Disney pieces of property. And all of it is good. But to say, day one, when this thing goes online, the first ever live action Star Wars series starring Pedro Pascal called The Mandalorian, a gritty, the good, the bad, and the ugly kind of feeling story set with a lone gunfighter set in the Star Wars universe on the outskirts of the galaxy. There is nothing they could have done. No one shot thing. They, I mean, they could have added more, but... To me, there's no one-shot thing they could have done that would have gotten more people interested in that first weekend. I, I mean, honestly, I think even more than... I mean, obviously, if you said, we're going to launch this service with Avengers 5, okay, that would be a difference. But I don't even think you could have launched this thing with a Loki series and gotten more interested than The Mandalorian. I don't think you could have launched this thing with WandaVision and gotten more interest than The Mandalorian. I really think this was a key piece of their puzzle. And I think it was a brilliant... Part. Now, again, this thing is not going to launch bigger than Netflix, Rob. I just don't see any way that that's just not going to happen. Netflix is still the big kid on the block, but this is going to take them a long way. And I'll tell you what, Rob, I saw this Mandalorian behind the scenes stuff. The panel was the panel was completely different than the Star Wars Episode nine panel. The Star Wars Episode nine panel was awkward. It lacked life. I mean, there was there's a great moment with Billy D. Williams saying, Lando's with me, been with me the whole time. That was great. The great reception, Kelly Marine Train got all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, it was kind of lifeless, awkward, uh, whatever. The Mandalorian panel was different. It had energy, it had excitement, which was really, really great to see. And this behind the scenes footage stuff has just gotten me more and more excited. I think this looks spectacular. I think launching the service with this show is a great, great idea. How do you see it? Dude. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love I'm it when like, you start like, your sentences just with uh, dude. <laughs> I, I just think that they're my man, Bob Iger. You know, I, I missed our squash game yesterday. <laughs> I don't think that there is a a better business decision, perhaps in the history of entertainment than to launch this streaming service with the Mandalorian and looking at how the creative team. First of all, two words, Carl Weathers. I mean, yeah. come on. It's seeing Carl Weathers in Star Wars garb. I, I felt like I was seeing an old friend come home that I didn't even know how much I missed. You know, and, and the, the, the casting choices are incredible. The directors they've got. But what I was so excited about was the design, how we're getting a yeah. bunch of new spaceships and new things like parked next to a sand crawler. You know, and, and, and they're, they're showing us the familiar and yet giving us a bunch of new stuff. And I think that that was a big mistake that the J.J. era of Star Wars made. It's like, no, nah, we're not really going to give you anything new. We're going to give you TIE Fighters and X-Wings again and Star Destroyers. You know, one of the great things as a kid growing up, when you first saw Imperial Walkers after seeing Star Wars, you were like, what? What? Snow speeders? I mean, as a kid, you wanted all that cool new hardware so you could build the models and play with the toys and get excited about it. And the Mandalorian looks like, 
the kind of Star Wars that I was jazzed about when I first saw the trailer for Empire Strikes Back when I was a kid. I, I, all that stuff, the behind the scenes, that uh, I, yeah, I watched it. I know somebody illegally recorded it. But you know what? I wasn't there, and I felt like a Star Wars fan. I was obligated to do so, so sue me. But I was so excited what, what they showed. I mean, it's, it's like here are people that finally understand exactly what the audience wants from Star Wars. They got Dave Filoni making his live action directing debut. The Mandalorian armor looks badass. They're talking about making it, you know, as soon as they said Sergio Leone, the man with no name, good, the bad, and the ugly, I'm like, come on. Everything about this seems so dead on. I cannot wait. I am so excited for this. I can't even tell you. And one of the great things about it too is it continues on kind of what they did in The Force Awakens when J.J. used to talk about how Star Wars needs to feel like the lived-in universe. It's got to be dirty. It's got to be, you know, it's got to have elements of that. Yes, you're going to have your 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 kind of clean, polished, futuristic stuff, but it's also got to have that lived-in feel. And watching all this stuff with The Mandalorian, it had that. It had that gritty, oh. lived-in feel. It, it's definitely, it's a Western in space. I feel yep. like this is going to be their version of Logan. That's what I kind of feel like a little bit. I feel like it's going to be their version of Logan. And it's going to be great. I, oh, my God, it's going to be so good. I cannot wait. 